Welcome back to Minuteman Prep YouTube channel. My name is Ben. I'm going to be working with this Titan Solar Generator here, as well as these expansion batteries. These are 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries, and I'm going to pair them together for a 24 volt configuration. Pair it with the Titan, which is a 24 volt battery setup. We have lithium NMC batteries. The main things I'm going to be testing is one, can we successfully connect these batteries to this unit and discharge all of it collectively? So that way we can actually have 11,000 watt hours of battery capacity. And then the next main thing is if these are fully charged and I let these sit connected to the Titan, will the voltage that drains on here bring down the Titan? Because these batteries here are not meant to stay at 29 volts when paired together, whereas these are. These sit at about 27 volts when paired together. And so there's a two volt difference, which is definitely a big deal. I wanna see if this will drop from the 29 volts that it reaches when connected to this and brings these batteries down to 27 volts. So a lot of testing this video, stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. So what happened last time, I was doing a discharge at a 0.2C discharge rate. And what that just means is it's 20% of the battery capacity draining out of the inverter all at once. And the issue that I was having, I think, was entirely with this breaker right here. It kept tripping. It's probably just due to heat. And I found out that these do have a heat tolerance where if they get too warm, they pop. And that is where it is tripping and causing the issue. So this is the old one. It's got a bunch of rattling inside. I'm not sure what happened to it. I'm ditching that. Point zero energy was nice enough to support us by sending another one of these cables and it has the same breaker on it. However, I have heard many people say that they have continued issues with these breakers. So if this breaker fails again, I'll have a different breaker that I'm going to replace this with and I'll do the test once more. So this video is going to take me a few days again. If you appreciate that, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and get these batteries matched and voltage to these batteries so I can safely connect them. That's why I've got the eyeglasses here. And then I'm going to start the test. I don't want to bore you with all of that. All I'm going to do is take this battery cable, link these two batteries together here on the positive and negative, and then take these positive and negative right here, connect it to these eyelets on that cable, plug it into the side, and we will be good to go. They are balanced, they are ready to go, but I wanna to top this off all the way to 100% and then do the discharge, and that's gonna take a few hours for this to fully charge up. Okay, it is now after eight o'clock at night. This is finally done charging. Now, there's still a little bit of power going in. We haven't officially reached 29 volts. This will take another couple of hours for it to hit that 29 volt mark. Once it hits 29 volts and is between 29 and 29.1 volts, it's supposed to reset the screen. In my last video, I talked about this, but my mic wasn't working. You push this up arrow right here and you automatically force it to read out 100%. So now I have 422 amp hours at 100%. So now that we're almost up to 29 volts, I've reset the screen. What I'm going to do now is see what voltage the battery is at on here and then on here and then we're going to leave this all night long and see if it changes at all in the morning. It should adjust quite quickly because the voltage on each of these batteries likes to be at 13.5 volts for 100%. Right now, we've got it at 14.5 volts. That's for each one collectively at basically 29 volts. So now I'm gonna leave this whole setup all night long, at least 12 hours, and we'll see what voltage we're at in the morning. It is 13 hours later and we are at 28.8 volts. So there's not really any drop at all. As far as battery voltage, we're at 28.9. I think the only thing left to do now is leave this for a week and see what happens. You can see I've still got my full setup here. I've got it on top of these lithium iron phosphate batteries. I've got everything wired. The breaker is on. We are ready to go. I'm gonna let this sit here and I'll just check in on it and see how this voltage changes, but I'm gonna leave it turned off so that way there is absolutely no drain from the screen. You know that the battery is at 28.9 volts and that the screen says 28.8 volts. Just see what happens. It has now been five days since we started this test here. Let's go ahead and turn it on and test the battery voltage. Still saying 28.8 volts and the external battery is still saying 28.9. So it's held the charge perfectly well. Now it is time to put it on a load. We get this all the way down to 21 volts as the goal, which for the Titan means 0%. This is the real risk here if this is going to work or not. So hopefully it does. If it doesn't, I have a new one here that I've made that has a different breaker on it. We've got a 0.2C discharge load on it. 
got 28.0 volts on the Titan screen and 28.1 volts on the fluke meter. These do seem to be working in parallel just fine. We'll see what happens. About two hours in, 24.9 volts. The breaker just flipped and I learned with these breakers that they pop due to heat. The amperage was low. We go ahead and try to re-engage it. Screen says 24.9. We have 26.6 on the expansion batteries. That is a big difference. Let me go ahead and turn these off. Try to equalize these batteries a bit. So the breaker had popped. It's engaged right now. 25.6 volts there. 26 volts now, so it is equalizing a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool off. It might just be that it's such a long load. It's been going for nearly two hours. It might just be that this is getting too warm with about 17 amps of current, whatever was going through it constantly. It just warms it up and this breaker could be what the issue is. This block here is definitely warm. I wouldn't say it's hot by any means. Right, the breaker has remained engaged. It is cool. I have a fan blowing on it. I'm going to start the test again. This time I'm only going to do a 1000 watt load somewhere around there. Because I think what's happening is this breaker is just getting too warm and that's how they operate is off of heat. And that heat's just building up inside. All right, this is beeping. Check the voltage here. Got 23 volts here, 23 volts here. I'm going to turn this off and reset it. So it's supposed to reach 0% at 21 volts, but it's saying it reached it at 23 volts or 22.9 volts. That's pretty interesting. Now what I'm going to do is use this watt meter to see how much energy we put back into the batteries to get them fully charged up. Well, it took a lot longer than expected, but we finally have it fully charged up 100% here on the screen. We're at 29.0 volts on the screen. Let's go ahead and check the volt meter. 29.1 volt. That's perfect. Absolutely amazing. And the biggest thing is going to be how much energy the kilowatt meter metered while it was recharging this back from zero to full. This is incredible. As you can see right here, it says it did 11.45 kilowatt hours or 11,450 watt hours of energy back into the batteries. And the reason that's a big deal is because that shows that it did indeed use the entire battery capacity and that we actually got more than the rated battery capacity to go back in, which is quite incredible. Now I've got a third special test that I'm going to do on the Titan here. One that I've never seen done before because it goes against the recommendations from the manufacturer 0.0. So I don't know that this is going to work. But what I'm going to do is since I have no Titan batteries connected to the power module, the top section here, I'm going to connect these external batteries, which we know are at 29.1 volts. And we're going to put that into the battery expansion port. You're supposed to have at least one Titan battery with this, and that is the recommended method. So I'm not recommending this at all. I don't know what's going to happen here. I've got the breaker turned off. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and engage the breaker. Okay. And turn it on. No way. It worked, but it's saying 28 volts on the screen, not 29. It is indeed 28 volts. You can see that there under my arm, 28.1 volts. As soon as we disconnect these from the Titan batteries, then the voltage drop greatly. Definitely not going to work with the screen here, simply for the fact that it's not gonna hold 29 volts there. So I think that's why you have to have the one expansion battery, is that's going to set the voltage parameter for the Titan to operate properly. With this voltage parameter, it's not going to work properly. But it is cool that I was able to get these to work, and I want to plug something in real quick. Switch this to AC, and it's working. So in a pinch, it's going to work, but man, look how fast that voltage drops. So it definitely makes it look like these batteries are not going to hold a higher voltage at all. Definitely want one expansion battery here. Test number one was, will it hold voltage? And the answer is yes. We left it sitting for almost a week and the batteries maintain their voltage with the Titan battery at 28.8 volts. Test number two was, will it drain the entire energy capacity of the batteries? And the answer is yes. And we confirmed that this morning by having it recharged from a wall outlet using the kilowatt meter. And then test three I added on because I wanted to find out and people have been asking, can you run the Titan with external batteries only? And the answer is yes, but 
it's not recommended because you're not going to get the proper voltage out of here. So in a pinch, you could do it, but you're not going to have the screen read out properly. The voltages are going to be messed up. So not recommended. Have at least one Titan battery with it, and that should fix those issues. I absolutely love the Titan solar generator. Its only weakness is that it doesn't do 240 volt power. So if you need 120 volt power, then it's definitely a really, really good option. It's a very powerful option. And honestly, it's the only one where you can add external batteries that are not of the same brand, which is a huge bonus for the system, especially in a grid down situation where you may be able to get batteries to expand this system, but not exactly Titan batteries. Now it's literally been three years that I've had my Titan running at my off-grid cabin nonstop for three years, and it still is working perfectly well. And a three-year-old Titan being used constantly has better output and retention of battery energy than brand new units coming onto the market. So the Titan really is an amazing system for 120 volt capability. It has high solar input as well. Now, if you wanna get the best deals on the Titan, you wanna to go to poweredportablesolar.com. That's going to be the place where you can get complete kits and extras and make it the system that you need for your backup power. It's also very simple. There's not a bunch of firmware updates or anything like that. It's a very simple system with the screen that adjusts to the amp hours that you have, and it just works. One of the best ways to be prepared is have backup power. The Titan has been one of my main backup power systems that I've used, and now knowing that I can do it successfully with these external batteries makes it even better, because I know that in a pinch I can add these on no problem and run even more stuff. Thanks guys, be prepared. See you on the next video.